I wanted to change my life for the better. I was tired of just being the quiet girl in the classroom who would sit in the back. Uh, I was tired of being the girl who had no friends. And I said, I'm going to do this for myself. I owe it to myself to do this for me. When she was 19 years old, Adina Kamkachi saved up $100 and decided that she was going to make her own jewelry. And so she did. She took the subway up to 47th Street and she bought beads, string, pearls, leather, brought it back to her home in Brooklyn and began to handcraft pieces of jewelry at her kitchen table. After starting to sell her jewelry on Instagram and recruiting her brother Meyer as CEO, Adina's side hustle began to flourish. In just two years, Adina's jewels had reached over $1 million in sales, all from 100 bucks. Today, Adina and Meyer's self-funded, multi-million dollar business has over 1,500 SKUs in its shop in Brooklyn, in department stores across the country, and in the hands of A-list celebrities like Ariana Grande and Billie Eilish. I loved art. Um, that was where I felt like I kind of understood things, Photoshop, all of that. And what about, uh, did you take graphic design? Yes, I did. And I think I even remember one of the projects we had was to design your own shop. What grade is this? This was in 11th grade um, and I designed a jewelry shop. And I remember showing it to my teacher and she was in shock by the way that I created the packaging for it and the storefront and pretty much all of that. What made you think to create a jewelry shop when the teacher just said, create any shop? Yeah, um, I always loved jewelry, always. I used to go to Claire's uh, at the King's Plaza Mall and just spend hours in that store looking at all the jewelry, trying things on. I just loved the intricate details of that each piece of jewelry kind of held. And right when I was out of college, I was deciding what I wanted to do because I was really thinking about going into psychology. And so I was kind that, of- That was what you majored in? Yes. Um, and it was something that I was really contemplating. Do I want to become a therapist or do I want to become an entrepreneur and kind of go after that business aspect that I felt I always had born in me? What made you have that feeling? When I was a kid in school, I used to sell things. I used to go to the grocery store buy snacks, sell them for double, triple the price, um, kind of like make a markup on all of that. You were going to the grocery store. Yeah. You were buying snacks, like what, like a bag of chips? Like a like bag of candy? chips. Yeah, I remember even after um, Simchat Torah, I had all this candy and my mom was like, what are we doing with this? I'm like, I can handle it. Don't worry, I'm going to make money off of this. Genius. And I would literally take it to school, put it in my locker and like every day, bring out some stuff, you know, and, and sell. And my mom used to give me accessories from her office and um, just anything I can get my hands on. And I would just turn it over and sell it. And I mean, kids my age were buying it. Kids older than me, kids younger than me. So I was kind of like a little businesswoman in elementary school. Did you realize that? Yes, I did, definitely. I definitely realized that I had a knack for selling for the retail feel. That was when I decided I really want to pursue something in business. Um, and then as I got older and I started to fall in love with psychology and, you know, the idea of understanding people in a deeper sense, um, I was kind of like perplexed and I wasn't sure which route I wanted to take. And that was when I said, I'm going to major in psychology and have that as a backup. And I was with my mom and I just was saying to her, I finally got a good schedule for college. I'm only going to be in school two days a week, full days. What should I do the other days? And my mom asked me, well, what do you love? And I sat there and- Did she think that it was crazy to start a company because- No, she was very supportive. She actually um, always instilled it in me and my brother and my siblings to be our own boss. She always used to tell me, sign your own check. And that was something that resonated with me for my entire life. And seeing my parents working for other people or, you know, having to do things that necessarily that they didn't necessarily want to do, traveling, 
um, hours on end and days on end um, for someone else, I said that I was not going to be that person. And I was, if I was going to do it, it would be for me. It would be for my family. And that was when I said, I am 100% going to become an entrepreneur. When my mom asked me, what is it that you love? I told her jewelry. And right there, she told me, Adina, why don't you start to sell jewelry? And I said, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. And then and there, I started an Instagram page and I said, this is how I'm going to sell my jewelry. This is how I'm going to get my name out there. Were, were people selling jewelry through Instagram? So I think there were a few companies that were selling jewelry through Instagram. The thing was, their jewelry never fit me right. I was overweight at the time. Um, their jewelry never fit me right and I was so upset how someone can make jewelry that either one was really not affordable um, and wouldn't even last and then two that you know was only fit for a really skinny um, petite girl and that was kind of what drove, like, drove me to design my own pieces so that they can fit me exactly the way I want them to fit me and then also fit other people so when I first started I was actually making the pieces by hand, did, taking did measurements. Did you know anything about selling jewelry before this day? Ultimately, I did not actually know how to sell or where to sell or what to do. What, what gave you the confidence to feel like you could figure it out and make it? Yeah, uh, it's a very good question. Um, you see, I always say, you, not, you, don't, you won't always necessarily have the confidence in what you're doing and you may be really afraid to take that leap but if you walk with confidence and if you show others that you're confident in what you're doing even if you're not everyone's gonna believe you and that was how I started because I was an overweight girl and I said I know that I'm different but I'm going to do what I have to do and I'm gonna make it to where I want to make it thankfully I had my family as a support system and little by little, that confidence became real and I no longer had to fake it. So in, initially, you, op you start an Instagram page, it's called Adina Schools? Yes. I was sitting there thinking what I want to name this company. Um, and my mom asked me, do you want it to be named after you? Do you want to have your name tied to the business or not? And instantaneously, I said, I'm going to be the face of this company and I want people to know who it is behind this brand. At first I was afraid because, um, you know, like I said, I was afraid. I wasn't the perfect girl. I wasn't, you know, what everyone wanted to see, but I said, I'm going to do it. It's crazy that you were like, there's two parts. Like one is you're saying like you, you felt like, oh, I'm not the perfect girl or I'm different or whatever. So like that would lead somebody to be not as confident but yet you like you spun it around mm -hmm. to drive you to say yeah like i'm gonna do whatever it takes to make it yes i wanted to change my life for the better i was tired of just being the quiet girl in the classroom who was sitting in the back uh, i was tired of being the girl who had no friends and i said i'm gonna do this for myself i owe it to myself to do this for me and that was how it started and then as I grew and as I expanded, um, I worked on myself, on my health, on my appearance, and I gained back that confidence that I only had when I was really young and kind of you know, established something that was much bigger than I had initially anticipated. When you first started, where did you envision it going? Mm -hmm. um, well, I didn't envision it getting to here. I always had a dream that it would, but when I, you know, kind of faced the reality, I didn't really think that it would get this far. I didn't know that I would go into production and have factories working for me and that I would travel overseas. I didn't think any of that. I didn't think I'd end up in department stores in Neiman Marcus, Bloomingdale's, Revolve, Nordstrom, just to name a few. You were just thinking, I have a few days off in college, yeah. and I love jewelry. Yes. And I felt like that would be a side hustle for me to make money. You start this Instagram page. Now you're saying, I'm selling jewelry. Like, how does the process mm -hmm. work? So the first thing I did, being that we're in New York, I went to 47th Street. I bought everything that I needed. I bought tools. 
I bought these very weird looking utensils. I bought beads, I bought pearls, I bought leather, I bought string, I bought everything I can possibly get my hands on. And I said, I'll put it together at home. And I literally started with $100, that's all I had. And I didn't want to take money from my parents. So I took that $100, I went to the city, I bought what I could, and I started to actually handcraft the pieces at home. So at first I made a, a necklace just for myself, and then I started to make other pieces that I would model and put on the Instagram. And people were calling me and texting me random numbers, and I was like, can this be? Who was I? I was right. an 18, 19 year old little girl who no one knew, and I mean, Adina Kamkachi, what, what's that name? You know, like who, who is that? You know, I, I've never heard of that name, but I was in shock that people trusted me and were buying my jewelry and actually listening to my advice, listening to how I told them how to style the pieces. And that's when I said, this is something that I want to do for the rest of my life. What did you think was the reason why you were getting so many calls? Like um, what was the niche that you were yeah. catering to that was missing? I wanted to be that type of jewelry brand that could cater to someone who's thin and someone who is not. You know, not just have pieces that was, you know, the runway piece or the model piece. I wanted to have things that can fit everybody. And so I would literally take people's measurements and that's how I would make their pieces for them. So they felt like it was curated specifically and exclusively for them. Then another factor was the price point. I wanted to be affordable. I knew what it was like to grow up wanting things that you cannot afford, that your parents cannot afford. And I learned the hard way that if I wanted something, I would have to work to get it. And so I said, I want to be affordable to everyone so that even if someone does not have the help of their parents, they can, you know, muster up a couple of dollars and buy my pieces. So you took things that you always wanted. Correct. And you said, I, I'm going to make that. As opportunities started to open up, I was able to actually have a showcase in a bathing suit store um, on Avenue U. And I realized that Instagram is not the only place where I can sell my pieces. And after seeing how well I did uh, for that season in that store, I, I kind of said to myself, I want to have a store. And I was still too small. Um, didn't have you know the financial means to get there just yet another opportunity opened up and I had my showcase in the hair salon I sold there um, and I saw the potential and that was when I started to stop making all the pieces started to actually curate design and make different pieces that was when I started going to trade shows and finding factories manufacturers all of that started getting into production and then when I realized that I was not buying enough quantity and, you know, to really get in with these big guys, you have to really bring in big quantity. I decided, you know what, let's open up a website. I decided to convince my brother to come into the business. At first he told me, no way, I'm not going to do this. I don't know anything about jewelry. This is, you know, this is not my field. And then when I showed him the numbers and I showed him Mara, this can really be something big. Help me with this. I can't do this on my own. And I'd much rather have my brother helping me than have a stranger helping me. Right. So maybe for him, it was kind of that same feeling you had that your parents instilled in you of yes. like, be your own boss, mm -hmm. write your own check. Yeah. Like this is the way you want to live. Correct. And I think after the both of us seeing the things that we were missing out on, um, seeing our friends you know, have money or be able to rely on their parents for certain things that we couldn't. Uh, I think we both realized, you know what? We'll make our own money. Mar came in as a CEO and he told me, you handle the rest. And I told him, you don't have to know the jewelry. You don't have to know the product. I'll handle all of that to be a CEO. You have to know numbers. You have to know accounting. You have to know many things that I knew I was not capable of. And even though it was a beautiful title for me to hold, I gave it up and gave it to Mara because I felt like he would do it much better. Mara explained to me, you can't spend 100% of what you make. That's when him and I kind of said to each other, we're working for free. For, for, you know, I was work At this point, I was working two or three years for free, 
how do we start to pay ourselves? How do we start to hire you know, people to help us? We were doing this all alone. Once the website you know, gained more traction, um, we hired one of our cousins to help us because we were doing this out of our home. So when Mara first started the website, he was in his room and then we moved into the kitchen. <laughs> when we outgrew the kitchen, we went down to the basement. We would have the entire family help us. I'd get my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, all of us. We were all working and packaging orders. And Mar Mara and I looked at each other and we said, this is just the beginning. I remember Mara telling me, if you think this is a lot, just wait till what's gonna be next year. And I told him, but how much more can there be next year? He's like, you wait and see. Then Mar told me, you know, there's this thing called influencer marketing. And I was like, what is that? He's like, well, we're gonna have to give free product to celebrities or to influencers and have them post for us. And I told him, no way. I told him, I'm not giving my jewelry for free to anybody. I work hours on end on these pieces. How am I gonna just give this jewelry away for free? He told me, trust me, it's gonna work. And I said, okay. For me, it was very hard because I was taking out of our inventory, out of our stock. Right. Um, but I wanted the packages to be beautiful, so I put my heart and soul into it. And then when they would post and story, and then the followers started to jump up, I said, Tamara, this is definitely something that we have to continue doing. We got our name out there, people started to recognize the brand, and then an opportunity opened up for me to open uh, an actual store. So I was able to like lease a little, a little store. I was so nervous. I remember saying, who's gonna walk into my store? We opened the store, and thank God it did well. It was a hit. People loved coming in. So having the store and then an online presence as well kind of gave Mara and I the, the boost and the confidence to continue doing what we were doing. Do you guys have like daily or weekly meetings? Mara and I? Yeah. Always, almost every day. We'll say. Is there a certain time every day that you take? At the end of the day. We're both very, very busy during the day. We both stay in the office till very late. And I'll come up when we're having dinner because we'll order into the office, we'll have dinner here, and we'll just talk. I remember Mara telling me, we're gonna have to look for an office. And I told him, we're perfectly fine here. We don't, in the basement. We're in the basement, we don't have to pay rent. We don't, he's like to me, Dina, we have no more room here. We have to get an office, we have to hire people, we have to really, you know, take that leap. And I remember being very afraid. And we came to this building, and we looked at the, the floor and the minute I saw it, it was empty, there was nothing there. The minute I saw it, I said, this is the place. It was a 2,000 square feet office. We finally hired people. So we hired an in-house photographer. We hired someone to actually pick and pack the orders. We had other packers um, and we just started to expand. Now, up until now, I was also answering the customer service, phone calls and emails, Instagram, so you weren't sleeping? No, we were not. Both of us were not sleeping. So Mara looked to me and said, we have to get someone for customer service. And I was afraid because I said, I I'm handling the things in the best way possible. How can I trust someone else to start answering these emails and basically handle my relationship with these customers? But we did. And we started off with just one customer service representative. And this was in September when we basically signed um, two years ago. And we just grew it just we just kept hiring and hiring and it was like no matter how many people we hired it was never enough and no matter how much space we had on that wall we went from 100 SKUs to 200 SKUs to 1500 SKUs and that's just how it was and then we dedicated an entire room just for 14 karat and another room just for the fashion jewelry and then an entire division of customer service, an entire packing team, an entire uploading team. It was just insane how it grew. I was mesmerized. And I said, if it weren't for Meyer, I would never get to this position because I was, I, I didn't know that things like this were possible. Were you thinking like every day or every week that was going by, like, holy cow, look at how quickly we're growing. First of all, it was shocking. I felt like I was dreaming and this is all going to end really quickly. And when it didn't, I said to myself, I just can't believe where we've gotten to. 
and how we were able to get to this. I mean, if you ask me, I'll attribute a factor of it to luck. We were in the right place at the right time. What do you mean right place, right time? Like when we started the Instagram page, it was a perfect timing. Instagram was just starting to boom. More and more newcomers were coming onto the app. Um, it was much easier to follow and get followed. Um, it was easier for people to see our jewelry. Um, so, you know, the algorithms were very different. And so it was much easier to get followers. Today we have 583,000 followers on our Instagram page. I would never think that I would get to that number, ever. So you started only selling mm -hmm. costume jewelry? Yes. When I first started doing the jewelry by hand, I realized I can't do this. It's a lot of work, it's very tedious, I couldn't fulfill orders in time. I started realizing, you know what, let me see if I can actually get a factory to produce this for me. And there was a trade show. I went to the trade show, we were, both, we were so nervous to go to the trade show. I remember um, one of my parents had to come with us because we were so young and they were like, you can't just get up and go by yourself. And we found someone who was very reliable. We gave him designs, he created for us. And when we started off buying two pieces per item, we started, after that we started buying five. And after five, it was 10. And then it just became 30 and 50 and now it's hundreds. We found more factories, we went to more trade shows, we flew to Hong Kong, we flew to Europe, we went everywhere. You can name me any country and I can tell you what I bought from there. When I work till two, three in the morning, that's because I'm sending them designs that I created, that uh -huh. I made. That's when I'm the most creative. Between one to 3 a.m. is when I probably work the hardest. Where do we stand today in terms of the product line? We have fashion and fine. Between the two lines, we have over 1,500 SKUs. It's 1500, just- 1,500, that's- do you know all of them? Like I know every product. How do you keep that? How do you keep fifteen hundred different products in your head? It's um, it's just I don't know. I guess when you when you are so involved in the creation of that product, you just you can't forget it. How different do you feel personally today than six years ago? So different. So much has changed. I didn't love myself. Now I do. Um, I didn't know what I had to offer. I didn't know my worth. I didn't know my value. And now I do. And now I don't let anyone take me for granted because I know how important I am. And I don't say that in terms of fame. I say that in terms of as a person, as a human being. I know that I have validity. When you were in school, mm -hmm. Do you feel like people that looked at you differently growing up yeah. and now see you today? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's crazy to think that someone who bullied me only 10 years ago is now messaging me and asking me for advice about business or how they can grow their business, or if I can help them, which I always do, because that's who I am. But it's crazy, it's astounding to believe it. I remember when I was in school, I used to say to myself, I'm gonna be big one day. And all these people who are making fun of me, or who are laughing at me, or who are treating me like I'm worth nothing, one day, and I, and I remember looking up to God and saying, you are gonna do this for me because you owe it to me, because you know the pain that I feel. I said, one day these people are gonna come and look for me. And they're all going to know who I am without me having to tell them who I am. They'll see it for themselves. Do you um, feel like besides business and family that you want to try to inspire kids who might have been in similar or might be in similar situations definitely um, because if they see you on the other side they're yeah. like I could make it you absolutely know? Um, I always said I wanted a after Adina's I wanted to be an inspirational speaker um, give seminars teach people how to start a business from nothing 
um, instill confidence in people that need it and show, you know, and, and like you said, show people that you can come from nothing and you can make it. And how, how do your parents feel? They sacrificed their lives. They left their homes. My mom came from Israel. My father came from Syria. They did not think for a million years that here's where we'd be. Uh, through all the years of working for other people and of the running around and just being put down, this is us telling them thank you for coming to this country and giving us the privilege and the honor, the right to live here and to make something of our lives. Wherever you are in your life, no matter how old you are or what's your gender, religion, ethnicity, it really doesn't matter. Believe in yourself all the way through to, to the end because one, one day something's going to give and life is not just going to push you down anymore. The more you fight it, one day you'll win. Always swim through the current no matter what because you'll, you'll make it. Crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm living proof of that. Yeah. So. It's not, if it happened to me, it can happen to anyone. You just have to believe in yourself and work really hard for it. We really started from nothing. So. Wow. Yeah. And to see how this company has flourished into a multi-million dollar business is uh, amazing. Mm -hmm.